Hey everyone, welcome to The Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. I'm Marsh Parker. I'm Ian Fuego here. Here to do another Patreon requested review. This one was requested by the poll from September. <laughs> oh my God. Maybe I should not shout those out. Um, again. Yeah, and it's October not. right now. Right, yeah, we're recording this in yeah, October. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Certainly. There was some, some editing that needed to go down. And, uh, this is a lost, lost episode. We got lost in the October <laughs> shuffle. We thought we made this live. Sorry, Indeed. Guys. So uh, here we are to discuss the fantastic, unbelievable foreign vampire movie, Let the Right One In. Yeah. One of the best vampire movies ever. And that is the memory that I had. Now, mm -hmm. when we were dividing up the movies to watch this week and talking about it over our thread, I actually made a point um, to Marsha and to everyone saying we need to try and rewatch any movie that we've been requested by Patreon mm -hmm. because doing it based on memory isn't really fair, except for the case of The Exorcist, because of that we know. I might still just rewatch I might now, too. Honestly. Yeah, I think we'll have time. We're not going to get we'll, we'll to today. We'll see. We'll see. No, no, no. <laughs> no, we we're not doing it today. No, we're not doing it today. Yeah. But this is one that I am supremely glad I rewatched because I do remember loving the movie, mm -hmm. but having rewatched it now, this movie is very, very easily one of the top five best vampire movies of all time. Easily. For sure. It is done so well so artistically the characters are so engaging the cinematography is so beautiful the setting is so amazing and appropriate and there's so many interesting different things that are done in the film that it is just a true horror masterpiece in my opinion this movie is phenomenal and it's so gory when it goes for it too mm -hmm. yeah. marsh parker i thought it was boring oh my god i was so bored seriously it was so slow oh my god it was oh so Slow. I'm sorry. Get the was... fuck out. <laughs> just get out. Even with the, no, just no, no, go. No. Bye. No, no, no. no, we don't need her. No, okay. Even with the rewatch? Jesus, stuff, really? Did you feel that way before? I never you watched like, it before. This is your first, first time, time watching, watching it. it. Okay. First time watching it, and I... But you had seen the remake? I saw the remake, yeah. You saw the remake oh, first. The oh, the mass no. Bro. Oh, I had no idea. When I watched the remake, I didn't know it was a remake. And that's actually and the, the original film. I didn't even know... Uh, to be honest, when you said that this was on our list, I thought we were watching the, the remake. remake. So you and, and, dress for it. and I was like, oh, I like that movie. And then I'm like, oh, wait. Ugh. This They're is the same exact tongues. movie, but like better. Slow. On the rewatch, I actually watched it with the dubbing. I didn't watch it in the original language. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I did the opposite. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, the, I, watched the subtitles. I watched the subtitles, and subtitles don't bother me. The at dubbing all. actually worked pretty well for this one. I, I don't know if I've watched I it with the dubbing. I hated the little boy. Really? I hated the little boy. I was like, oh my. He's God. a little Babadooky. Yeah. And, I mean, and like, he was actually, no, I take I that really, back. I don't no, the Babadook like kid was really annoying. I feel like. He's like borderline see, that's serial the weird thing. killer waiting to happen. I was, I was initially inclined to agree with Marsha, but now in retrospect, no, I think he actually did a good job. I think he did a good job of, know. he kept his head down and he was, he like acted without looking at characters a lot of the movie, but I thought it was actually appropriate because he was such like a beaten down soul. Yeah. You know what I mean? I okay, well that's interesting. He was a special, a special. Wow, character. so we have two top five vampire movies of all time and one person that says boring. No. Woofda! All right, Super Fuego, your thoughts. I absolutely adore this movie, and rewatching it just merely reinforced that aspect. <laughs> <I'll get it. laughs> Bless you, All right. sir. Maybe um, I'm missing something about this movie. Well, well honestly, I don't mind the slow build. I, I personally just latch more so onto the, the friendship between those two, and how sweet and interesting I think it is. However, compared to my first few watches, this was the first time where, as I watched it. I feel like she targeted him as her next person. Oh, you didn't to feel it was her. as heartfelt? Uh, well, I still did, but I felt like she almost targeted him as her next means of survival, mm -hmm. more so than I had ever picked up on in my previous <laughs> viewings of this movie. Because before, so I was like, oh, she's stuck in the kid's body. He is a kid. They're friends. They're helping each other out. It's it, it's cute and it's like sweet, and yet there's brutal stuff going on and so on and so forth. But the more so I think about it now, the way she's becoming in this movie in uh, like unsympathetic to the older guy who's helped her out for so long also the fact that she saw how he's picked on and he's just like you know 
Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? And you can tell he has all this repressed rage and stuff. The well, first time she sees him, he's going after a tree. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's where I feel like, I feel like in some ways she almost picked him out as she's like, that's the kind of guy who yeah. I can mold into being willing. Sorry, there's a crazy cat here. Mm -hmm. um, I can almost mold into being willing to aid and abate me and keep me safe. And that I could still kind of care about. And that, that is the, taking a bit of the heart out of the story if you're looking at it that way, though. And yeah, and for and it was the first time that I looked at it in that manner, and I found it fascinating. It's fascinating, yeah. but I I'm choosing to not look at it that way because yeah. I like the the love aspect of it all. I do too. Yeah, um, yeah. But no, yeah, I still so, appreciate that. But I I never looked at it that way, so it was kind of a trip to me mm -hmm. to look from that perspective. So the story is about a young boy in is it Sweden? Yeah, um, and uh, and he is sort of picked on by a group of bullies. Um, lives in a. It's either in the winter. Or it's a, just a very snowy climate. It's and, Sweden. <laughs> yeah, it's Sweden exactly. And um, he lives in this apartment structure. And uh, there's a a new group, a new old man and um, daughter, granddaughter. We're not entirely sure. Yeah, new tenants move into the building, and the um, the little girl sort of starts interacting with the little boy and um, it's it's a development of a friendship and the movie evolves and you find out that there's more to the little girl than meets the eye she's actually a vampire and the old man is sort of her caregiver without ruining anything um, because this movie did surprise me I was like oh that's right I forgot that's what this was and then honestly the whole final act um, the, the, the climax that happens in the pool, I'm like, oh, that's where It Follows got it from. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, it's total theft, man. <laughs> absolutely. But, um, but nonetheless, um, the story is really intriguing to see how the relationship develops between the vampire little girl and the main little boy and, and what happens from there, again, without spoiling it. So I loved the story of this movie. I, I really enjoy it. Well, I really like the story of the movie and the remake, which is the exact same story. Oh, and, like, yeah. Uh, it, like, play it's by based play. on this movie, Marcia. And I think the, yeah. No, obviously it's based off this movie. It's a remake. But, like, I think the biggest problem I had with this film was, like, I didn't enjoy the characters as much as I... Even though the exact same fucking characters... Excuse my language, I'm sorry. Uh, they're the, it's the exact same everything, except for maybe I just felt more connection with, uh, you Chloe know... Grace Moritz with Chloe and then the other kid I felt like they gave him more of a connection like he had they built on his story a little bit more I felt in the remake than then they did touch on this one and so I didn't have any attachment to him I thought he was like a whiny little whatever like he bothered me <laughs> whiny like, little whatever every every time That's he was nice on the him. screen I'm just like I just wanted to I wanted to kill Strangle. him like I get why the bullies hated him and um, and it what? was like, I do. Oh my God. Like, there's wow. something about that. He deserved kid. it. <laughs> there was something about that kid that just, just was like, coming, you boy. Yeah. I, I mean, somebody had to wake him up. Like, what is wrong with you? Get you know, like, woke, bra. That like, is aggressive. I'm sorry. Though. I don't know. I just had that 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 reaction to okay. this guy. And like, and that's it's okay. Like, so people have reactions, and like that yeah, was okay. my. You're clearly a bully at heart. That was my reaction to this. <laughs> but when you look at the remake, like, I didn't get that reaction. I had a connection with the kid. I okay. felt for him. And I was like, oh, he's just, like, really struggling because of everything that's going on at home. And it makes sense. This kid just looked like a little twerp. They just, like. <laughs> the other kid had oh. the same things going on at home. Divorced parents. Yeah, and all but you other felt stuff. it more with him. I don't know. Maybe. I need to rewatch the remake now. Yeah. Oh. Now that's what I'm thinking, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because like, I, I wonder if she's I, right. I wonder if she's right. I just I Again, I do feel that one beat from the remake was handled better yeah. than that scene beat mm. in this in this movie yeah. versus and what I can't I, I do I do agree with the fact that I love the story I like the idea of the story um, I thought this it played really slow in this version which was really hard to like get to the point you know how long like, is the remake it makes me wonder because this one is sure. like two hours but it and, felt yeah. so long and <laughs> it is a little longer it does two. take its time yeah yeah especially when they incorporate the stuff of the other people who and the other that one was it was slow too them. it wasn't a fast paced movie mm -hmm. but it didn't it was like it was like talking it's like talking like this <sighs> did any of you know different Marcia said? exactly yeah. it's like <laughs> you you can't hear me because you lost your patience Can and you like attention you're like i'm done i can't <laughs> you know like that is my hang up on this 
context. But the right. story so not the story so much. Yeah. Okay. Mm. This is the protection, I guess. Okay, so we're still covering story, though, right? Yep. I mean, I would honestly say the only time where it maybe loses a little steam for me is where um, the the child goes to visit his father, and there's lots of that going down. And also, some of the there is a subplot with a uh, person who lives there who gets infected, and it's a woman, and all the stuff that goes down with her. It's not as interesting <laughs> until I liked it until you get to full circle what transpires and how she feels yeah. after being infected and what she wants to be done. Mm-hmm. That scene is so legit, dude. Like, man. And it shows the great effects that they had the capability for in this movie. Indeed. I'm, I'm actually very excited when we get to that. But, you know, story, I I can't give as much of Let the Right <laughs> Let Me In, you know, credit because of the fact that I love this story so much. I'm actually really at fault for not finally getting around to reading the Swedish novel mm. that it's based on. Because I have written it. Read- uh, well, it's been translated uh, into English, and you know, it's, like it's you're, been. You're, you're, well, I mean, just like all of the girl with the dragon, whatever, is, you know, you. those are all mm-hmm. Swedish oh, books, and they've been, they've so all been tra- translated mm-hmm. into, into English. And so, uh, yeah, this is one that I really think I, I have renewed interest in the basic elements of the narrative mm-hmm. here after watching this, and I want to, I want to rewatch the remake now, and with as much as I hate on the remake and Chloe Grace Moretz, blah 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 blah, like but. Her. Well, let's talk no, about the great. acting. Then. She's great, yeah. Um, so the not Chloe Grace Moretz, the original girl, I actually thought she did a great job. And I, and again, when we get to the effects, the makeup effects on her, showing her various states of feed, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. knowing how recently she's fed based on how pallor, you know, how, how pale her pallor is and stuff like that. Like yeah. it's, it's really crazy and, and well done. Yeah. But the acting, I, I, again, I... I wanted to agree with Marsha when she said the kid was annoying, but then I remembered, no, I actually liked what the kid did. So I liked the main blonde kid, I liked the girl vampire, um, I, I thought everyone else was, was just good, but they specifically carried the movie, so I, I really appreciated the acting there. Not so much for you, Marsha? Not a fan. Okay. I mean, I thought, I thought she did okay, I think did okay, but I just, there was nothing about, and, and maybe, I don't know, I just, no. Okay. But yeah. Chloe Grace Moretz still felt like a kid to me. This girl in this original film did not feel like the way, like with her with her stoic presence and with the way that she delivered dialogue and stuff like that, she felt like an old soul to me. Yeah, I agree. Chloe Grace did not really epitomize that. And that was a, it's not that she did a bad job, it's just that this girl really did not feel like a child to me in her mannerisms and the way that she spoke and everything. And it's it's, it's the reverse uh, Pennywise situation in for me. In some ways, yeah. Where, um, the, again, I said that Tim Curry played a silly clown by the name of Pennywise that tried to kill people, and Bill Skarsgård played something masquerading as a clown calling itself Pennywise. I was trying to This is, the, in the remake, it was, you know, a little girl that was a vampire. Mm-hmm. In the original, it was... A little. It, it was. She even was said numerous times. She's like, like, I'm not a little girl. I'm not a little girl. She's yeah. Like, she's like, you know, um, it was something that was trapped in the body of a little girl. I. I so that's that's why I make that comparison. I, yeah. I think it's a valid point. Yeah, and just the the nature of their their relationship and the fact that you know, it it never even really gets into like anything sexual or anything <laughs> like that. It's like. And, and like the, this even the shades of it in one the, scene in, when in she climbs scene, into bed with him. Yeah, but even the puppy love though is snuffed out exactly. in the fact that it's <laughs> it's like very much though it epitomizes for me the asexuality of certain, like everybody interprets vampires differently, mm-hmm. and some interpret vampires as not being supremely sexual as being more asexual and being just more about just closeness and camaraderie and touch as opposed to physical pleasure and stuff like that because they're all about just draining blood and not about having sex. You know, and so that that's their true. Some true, vampire. True, lore, it's a, yeah. and, and, and that's why I said, and I feel like this really pursues that approach more so, where like the the true just getting off is drinking blood, not any sort of physical intimacy of a sexual variety. And so you know, that's what he's maybe into or hoping for or whatever it is, like approaching just crossing into teenage state. And she's not into it, and like. He accepts that, and he's like, there is a different sort of like closeness with this character that I feel and that she wants, and he he changes, and he's okay with it, and I you, you feel the love between these characters, you, you really do, the love, the care, the, 
the concern. I mean, it's all really there for me, and that's what sells this movie, is every scene that those two are together is what makes this movie so great. Now let's, um, we, we absolutely need to talk about, I think, the effects, the music, and the cinematography. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the cinematography first. I think it's a beautifully laid out film. Yeah, and awesome. Every shot is gorgeous, and um, it's, it, it is slow, uh, but I feel like the cinematography plays into that, like the, the pacing and the cinematography work hand in hand in this mm -hmm. one, uh, and it's it's tension building mm -hmm. and so I think it's it's appropriately done and it's just gorgeous to behold as the movie sort of unfolds yeah. I think again I think the pacing lends itself to good cinematography well I think the cinematography they did a good job and obviously I mean the set design and everything that goes with it was well thought out um, I think maybe for me that it felt so long with more of the editing room than okay than the actual uh, work of the, the director. Um, and I, cause you know, like I said, I love the story and I love like the aspect and they, in, you know, really set this, set a really nice stage. And I mean, especially when you think about like the scenes when they're in the, the apartment, the apartment or even in the, like the playground in the complex and, and um, the, the scene when they're out on the ice, you know, and, and the pool was done really, Classy and like, oh, yeah. um, and they they let <laughs> you know what was yeah. happening without actually having to show it at all times. And then when they did show the stuff, it was like, it was well done. So I I do feel that that was done as well. Sorry, I'm getting attacked. She doesn't like it. She doesn't yeah. want you to hold it. Fuego, your thoughts? Yeah, beautifully done. I mean, all of the icy imagery that we see all throughout Sweden just frozen to shizzle, and it's got a very just dreary and almost depressing vibe. I mean, for me, I since think it I, helped uh, the um, the ominous like really helped with the story. It does. It does. Yeah, it goes. Yeah, totally with setting the vibe and everything. And coming from somewhere where I live in sunshine most of the time, although the weather has been weird the last couple of months, more so than normal, um, that's what I connotate with, like, bright sunny days, I'll go Sesame Street. I don't care. And, uh, you know, when I think of, you know, those frozen Arctic or borderline areas of the world where it's just, I mean, the, the suicide rate is so high, like we were talking about in Lords of Chaos because of the fact that there's no sunshine. It's frozen, you're stuck indoors all the damn time. Uh, but the, the uh, frozen lake scene I thought mm -hmm. was ter terrific and how can you not talk about the climax with the pool that you know it follows ripped off mm -hmm. some, some stylistic points from and uh, you know I'm, I'm just ready to talk about some of the visual yeah. effects aspects of, yeah uh, okay so there's one scene in particular that sticks out to me immensely and it's where he will he refuses to invite her into his home oh um, my god that's so good and she still does it I love Well, that no, he scene. doesn't. He, he, he's, it's she, not that he's like keeping her out. No, no. She's like, like, can you like, invite me in? He's and he's just like, her. no, he's, you don't need to. Just come on in. He's testing her. But he, you can see in his eyes, he knows, and he doesn't think it's going to be and as she's bad just like, as it actually is. Okay. And, and just thing. walks in. God, yeah, that, that seems yeah. incredible. He's like it's messing, incredible in both versions. He's messing with her, and he doesn't think it's going to be as bad as it actually is where she walks in without him inviting him. And you see it on a lot of the promotional material. Her body like, literally betrays her. Yeah, it starts like breaking down the blood oozing from the orifices and everything. It's it's terrific, man. And and yet it's the sheer epitome of how much she does actually like how much she feels invested in his friendship, his presence, and how she can help him and all all these different things. And mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I just love that scene, man, and I love how they framed it visually. Yeah, I think the effects are phenomenal. There's tons of practical gore, and I Way think bloodier than I remember. Yeah, oh, it's <laughs> very bloody and slippery. Bloody is where I, I, I like to. That's that's how I judge the good bloody stuff. So Midnight Meat Train was slippery bloody. Yep. This is slippery bloody. You know, slippery bloody is good bloody, and this is definitely that. And um, and and not only that, but the makeup effects of the girl, like I mentioned earlier as to when she hasn't fed in a while versus when she has just yeah. fed. Like, it's so visually arresting. They they tell stories just with the progression of the makeup effects. Yes. And not many mm -hmm. movies take the time to do that. And it's such a and nuance. It's, that it is not. such a nuance, and, and it's like, it's, it's something that gives people like Megan from the Get Dead crew, like, 
a reason for existing, you know what I mean? Like, they can elevate, people like her can elevate films like this mm -hmm. um, when they have an opportunity and when directors trust their makeup effects artists to do stuff like Passage of Time and mm -hmm. things like that. I, I think, I think it's, this is just a shining example of all kinds of different effects. Yeah. What no, do you think, I, I think that you did a good job with that. Um, like, you know, besides the pacing, I mean, there are good things about this movie, and I think one of the, the things is just being able to know, like, how to use the blood effects and how to use, you know, the makeup effects to be subtle enough but more impactful so that way it helps tell your story without you having to use dialogue to do it. And I think that's probably one of the things that really moves you both um that they, they were able to say a lot without having to actually say anything and and they um did that really effectively mm -hmm. nice. so yeah i mean uh, i think we've covered i think most of the aspects about this movie guys if you haven't seen the original let the right one in you are truly missing out you should it is... watch it before you watch the other one yeah watch let yes. the right one in then watch let me in and, and then, then let's can... have a, a conversation right honestly maybe we should have a little special just like a first just we'll like, just rewatch it and then we can review that and just do a special to. versus episode kind yeah, of thing maybe yeah, we we'll do that so why don't you guys let us know in the comments down below if you have seen it what you thought if you haven't seen it are you interested to see it now uh, let us know and while you're down there we do have the link in the description box to our patreon if you want to sign up and support the channel more directly and select some movies for us to review uh, but until next time i've been cecil laird i'm marsh parker gracias i'm honey and fuego and remember stay scared <laughs>